In this video, we're going to look at the graphs of the six trig functions. Now, what we looked at before was in the CS plane, we were looking at the angle and seeing what the value of sine and cosine would be. And then from that, you can figure out what the values for the other trig functions are. Or we were looking at triangles uh, in the CS plane still and assigning lengths of sides, numbers to lengths of sides, and then using you know opposite over adjacent to opposite over hypotenuse and all those kinds of formula for, uh, to find the values of the trig functions, okay? That's not what we mean by graphing the trig functions. What we mean by graphing the trig functions is the, the horizontal axis will be the angle uh, which is most often called x, sometimes called theta, sometimes called t. Okay, so the angle is the horizontal axis. The vertical axis is the output. So, for example, if we had sine theta, which is the, what we have a graph of here, sine theta uh, or sine x, either way, um, y equals sine x. The sine x is the vertical distance. So as you can see, sine x oscillates between minus one and one, right? Between here, here it's minus one, then it goes up to one, then it goes down to minus one, then it goes up to one, etc. Okay, just oscillates in there. Um, this has a period of two pi, see one, one oscillation, and then, and then it repeats the exact same pattern again, and etc. So it, it's a, uh, period two pi. Notice that it goes through the origin. Sine of zero is zero. And it's also zero at pi and two pi and three pi and minus pi. At pi over two, it's at height one. And at three pi over two, it's at height minus one. And this just keeps going forever oscillating like this. That's called a sine function. It's also called a sine wave. Okay, but the sine function is the one that goes through the origin, the basic sine function. So that's going to be y equals sine x. The domain, you can tell from the graph, is all real numbers, or negative infinity to infinity. And the range is negative 1 to 1, including the endpoint. So you have the square brackets on both sides for that. Okay, so that's really important to remember that. People tend to remember the domain but they, on, these, on this one, but they forget the range. Now what we want to do is graph the reciprocal of sine x, which is cosecant x. Cosecant x is 1 over sine x. So notice if you take the reciprocal of 0, well, there is no reciprocal of 0. 1 over 0, can't divide by 0, right? So that means cosecant must have asymptotes whenever sine is 0. So there'll be an asymptote here, 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 etc. All multiples of pi will we'll have asymptotes. So I put in my as vertical asymptotes that, at all those. So notice one of them is the y-axis, and then you go over pi in each direction and you get other ones. Okay, now notice also, if, I'm at, if sine theta is one, say you're here, oops, say you're here, and sine theta is 1, then the reciprocal of 1 is 1. So that means cosecant of that angle is also 1. So these two graphs intersect each other at this point. They touch each other there. And the same thing happens at minus 1. The reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So the cosecant and the sine are the same value where it, whenever the sine is negative 1. So the graph touches here too. And then the ends here have to approach, have to approach the asymptote. So it'll go like this. And up here it'll go. And okay, so that's how that's gonna look. So that's what the cosecant looks like. Whenever I have to graph the cosecant, I always graph the sine function first and then use these patterns to, you know, if, if you do it a couple of times, it gets to be really easy. Um, to graph those. You can graph them on a graphing calculator, but 
graphing calculators don't usually graph the asymptotes. Sometimes they'll put a kind of junky line between some point that's on this graph and some point on this graph, but they're really just connecting those two dots. They're not drawing the asymptote. And sometimes they don't even do that. So, um, so you kind of need to know what they're supposed to look like. It doesn't go like up and then down and then up, which is what you might get on a calculator. Okay, so you have to know something about it. Also, I should point out, if you do graph these on the calculator, which is not a bad idea to get a feel for what they look like, um, uh, press the, when, when you graph, uh, first of all, make sure that your uh, mode is in radians and not degrees, or it'll be all wrong. Um, secondly, um, after you graph it, um, click, there's a button called zoom and click that button. And then you'll have a scroll down menu and scroll down to where it says trig, zoom trig. And what that'll do is it'll make each notch pi over two instead of one. So the, so then you can see these asymptotes fall right on one of those notches. Okay. So, uh, it just changes the scale, the horizontal scale. Okay, so the domain of the cosecant is all real numbers except for x equals uh, pi k, where k is an integer. Any integer multiple of k, I'm sorry, any integer multiple of pi, that's where the vertical asymptotes are. Okay, and the range is from minus infinity up to negative 1, including negative 1, union 1, including 1, up to infinity. Okay, and you can tell that from looking at the graph as well. Okay, if you forget the domain, draw the sign, look at where sign is zero, draw the asymptotes there, leave those points out for your domain. It's that simple. Okay, but you have to draw some pictures sometimes with these. Okay, so cosine, the cosine curve looks exactly like the sine curve. The only difference is it's been shifted to the left by pi over two. So notice sine goes through the origin and this same point over here is right here at negative pi over two. So the whole thing's been shifted left. And now with the cosine, this hump here, the top of this bump is right on the X axis. Okay, Just like that. So you see it reflects, there's a, it's a symmetry in the Y axis which if you remember means that it's an even function. We'll see that later, it's an even function, cosine is. Um, okay, so similarly to what we did over here, well, first let's write out the cosine. So cosine x, the domain is all real numbers and the range is negative one to one, including the endpoints, um, basically the same as sine as far as the domain and range go, right? now. If you're going to graph the secant, that's the reciprocal of cosine, you need to know where cosine is zero. And cosine is zero here, here, so pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, right? So it's going to be zero at pi over two plus any integer multiple of pi. These two are pi apart. And that's where the asymptotes for the um, secant are going to be. So I just drew those in. Notice, notice these asymptotes are kind of centered around y instead of one of them being on the y-axis. They're centered around the y-axis. And then similarly at one, when cosine is one, like here, secant is the reciprocal of one, which is still one, so they intersect at that point. Similarly, they intersect at negative one and they alternate like that. So it looks pretty much, it's basically the same as the cosecant, but it's just shifted pi over two to the left. So the asymptotes are in different places. Okay, so the domain is all real numbers except for pi over two plus any integer multiple of pi. And the range is negative infinity to negative one, including negative one, union 
one with a square bracket, comma, infinity, paren, right? So it, it, the range is the same as the range of cosecant. Okay. So that's the first four of these trig functions and what their graphs look like. The other two are completely different. But uh, I did the cotangent first here. And the reason I did the cotangent first is because it has the same asymptotes as the cosecant. It's the exact same asymptotes in the exact same place. One is on the y-axis, the next one is up at pi, and two pi, etc. And it has this kind of shape like this. So it has, it crosses the x-axis at pi over two, right? Th three pi over two, five pi over two, etc. Notice it has a period of one pi. This thing here repeats exactly a pi higher. And again and again and again. So, so uh, anyway, so that's what that looks like. And you can tell from the graph that the domain is uh, all real numbers except for pi uh, integer multiples of pi. So x not equal to pi k, where k is an integer. In other words, the domain is the same as the domain for cosecant up here. But the range is all real numbers because you can go all the way down and all the way up. So range is all real numbers. Now the tangent looks kind of similar, but its asymptot vertical asymptotes are the same as for the secant. These ones here. So I put it underneath that. So the tangent and the secant have the same asymptotes, means they have the same domain. Right, and so that's centered on the y-axis and the actual graph goes through the origin, see? So tangent goes right through the origin, and that means that these asymptotes have to be evenly balanced on either side. So this is pi over two here. Oops, sorry, lost my arrow. This is pi over two. This is three pi over two, four pi over two, etc. Okay, so that's what tangent looks like. The domain, all real numbers except for pi over 2 plus an integer multiple of pi. In other words, x is not equal to pi over 2 plus pi k, where k is any integer. And the range is negative infinity to infinity. Now, just to point this out, the period for these top four sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant are all two pi. And the bottom two graphs here, cotangent and tangent, they're both periodic with period pi. So two pi for the first top four and pi for the bottom two.